Hello, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and on this channel we get creative together and it's fun, not scary. I think I just mixed up my taglines. We get creative together or we make art together and it's fun, not scary. So we just went on holiday, a week long trip in Porto, Portugal. It was great. You know, we're traveling with a two year old. So we just wanted to see one city stay in an Airbnb where there was like naps and snacks and we even brought a few toys and we could just like walk the city and take in food and culture and the architecture, just wondering and looking, just using your eyeballs. <laughs> it was like enough, we didn't have to plan much what I'm trying to say. And I was super inspired by the architecture, the facades, the tile, the color, the little creepy, mysterious alleyways. All of it was just wonderful and so inspirational and it really sparked creativity. And then I came home and I was sketching some windows and doors and then I did this little sketch and you can find that on Instagram or YouTube shorts. Um, and so we're gonna take this today and we're gonna turn it into a watercolor painting. So I'm gonna show you how you can transfer your illustrations to make multiples, to make paintings. Um, there's a coloring page on Patreon. We'll talk about where you can find a tutorial about architectural doodles on my YouTube channel and lots and lots of good stuff. So let's just jump right in and get started. Let's sit down at my desk here. It is a beautiful sunny day. It is warm in March. I just remember this March break from when I was a kid, when we wore shorts, it was like, the the march break so that is the march break the kids are having this week and uh, i'm really enjoying all this sunshine it reminds me of our time in porto last week and i did a little illustration i mean porto this ancient city is just filled with colorful buildings gorgeous facades tiled facades there's these are illustrated uh, they're not photos, but I love that. I love that someone illustrated these beautiful postcards. So just to give you like the feel, the vibe of Porto, um, this tram that we took and yeah, it was just such a gorgeous, beautiful city. Just fodder for the imagination around every corner, every little tiny alleyway and red and yellow facade and the beautiful blue and white tiles. It, it was just exciting. It was an exciting city to walk. So anyways, I was inspired and I did a little sketch. So I created this sketch of a European building and it's made up of course of windows up top and then a door at the bottom. So to create this, what I did is I sketched some different window options. This is, of course is like a doored window. They have little balconies. These little Juliet balconies were everywhere. And then I decided on my door. So double door with the arch up above and then a window with tile below to sit beside it. So I kind of like sketched all the components um, and I did it in pencil first, went over it in pen, then came down here, sketched everything in pencil and went over it in pen with my fine liners, my fine liners, not just any pen, a black liner. And these, of course, you've got that nib size, so you can be quite precise, you know, get like those really thin little teeny tiny lines. Um, and if you want to see my whole process for this masterpiece, um, it is available, uh, it, you can watch it on Instagram as a reel, and then it's also posted to my channel, to this channel as a YouTube short. So if you wanna see you know, this coming together, just watch the short form content. What we're going to do today is start with this and we're going to transfer it and paint it, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. And of course, if you want more info about drawing and doodling architecture, I do have two videos here on the YouTube channel. I'm gonna link them in the description. So that in those videos, I take you through how to do like exactly this and how to shade it. Um, I have a worksheet for that on Patreon that you can check out. Um, so those are linked below. If you would like to see more stuff like this on the channel, you know, it's kind of hit and miss when I do things like this that are a little different. Let me know, I love to hear from you. What do you like to see more of this, yay or nay? Um, but let's just jump in and get started. So if you have done a doodle like this, and it of course is black and white, and you would like to uh, add paint to it, but you don't wanna add paint to this one, what we are going to do is transfer it. We're gonna bring it over here to a nice fresh sheet of watercolor paper. Um, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So 
First step, get a piece of tracing paper. I like to tape mine in place so I just know it's not going anywhere. Use a little piece of washi tape and it won't hurt your watercolor paper or your sketchbook. So there we go. Then take that fine liner. And remember guys, all of my supplies are linked in the video description. So you can use exactly what you see me using here. And I'm using my favorite, one of my favorite little watercolor sketch pads. And all you're going to do is carefully trace over everything. I mean, carefully and also not too carefully. Like if you, I tend to, when I'm trying to draw a straight line, I'll make, like my hand will shake a little bit. It's like my body's like, oh, you really need this to be not shaky? Yeah, I think it would actually be the perfect time to kind of shake. <laughs> so when I'm like quickly sketching like this, I, I of course don't have like a shaky hand, but when I'm like, oh, let me get that window straight, then you can see I'm, I am visibly shaking a little bit. So it doesn't actually matter for the trace if things are perfectly straight. It is just to get the general look. And remember, if you're like, wait, Shada, how do we draw these buildings? I already have a bunch of videos about exactly this, about creating these cute little architecture doodles and they are linked. And if you just want to jump in right here and you just want to paint my illustration, because that's what we're really focusing on today is the transferring and the painting. We're gonna use watercolor. Surprise. Um, this is available as a coloring page over on Patreon. So I was away on holiday last week. I didn't release anything, patrons. Um, as like bonus content because I do release a freebie every single week. Um, so because I didn't release anything last week with the Saturday video or the Sunday video, there will be two things this week. So today you're getting a coloring page and then Saturday there will be um, more bonus content. Anyway, you are probably like, wow, is she gonna trace that whole thing? No, I'm not. Look at this, if this isn't, TV magic, I don't know what is. <laughs> I already traced it. Um, and you can see like the lines are a little messy. That's fine. So from fun pen and ink sketch to watercolor illustration, here we go. We're gonna flip to a fresh page and I'm going to tape this one in. Let's just, you stay. I'm going to tape this in and then we will use graphite transfer paper to uh, transfer our image. So just take a second with it and make sure that it is straight. <laughs> All my lines are so <laughs> so crooked, I really can't tell what uh, it is, if it is straight or not. <laughs> That's okay. This is what my tracing paper looks like. It's nothing special. It's just from the dollar store. And then this is what my graphite transfer paper looks like. The brand is Speedball. It's like a Mona Lisa on the front. Speedball Arts graphic, um, yeah, graphite transfer paper. <laughs> a little different than like a carbon transfer paper. So you're gonna place it under your tracing paper, like a little sandwich, dark side down. And then for this part, we're not going to use pen, we're going to use pencil. And I do find a mechanical pencil is really good here because it's nice and sharp. And so just make sure that sandwich is like smoothed out. And we are just going to start tracing over everything. So you're going to trace your illustration quite a few times in order to transfer it. And that's kind of a nice thing. You're going to trace it onto the tracing paper then you're going to trace it once more to, in order to transfer it. And so by the time you actually go over it with pen for the final illustration, you're going to know your drawing so well. You're gonna know it inside out and I think that's a really nice feeling. Um, and you're gonna be very confident when you go to, to sketch it onto the paper because this will transfer it nicely. Um, but you still will want to go over the transfer with pen. Now, whether you do that before or after the watercolor is up to you. 
and we can talk about that once I get this transferred in. And all I really want to do is put my head like this and look at it super, super, super closely. So that's what I'm going to do and we'll just skip ahead in a sec here. <laughs> okay guys, I think I've transferred all of it. Now before you lift that tape, you definitely just want to check and make sure everything is there. And look, I missed the balcony. I missed the side of the building. <laughs> So yeah, it's good that the tape is still on there. Let's put this little balcony in. Everything, once again, does not have to be perfect. I think that's very important um, when approaching this whole project. You know, you're not going for perfection. All of my windows are like slightly different sizes and whatnot, and you know, I'm fine with that. Uh, that looks good, I think. Let's get rid of that. Uh, the reason I didn't draw in the bottom here was because it just looks so crooked. I was like, I'll just figure it out. <laughs> I did put this a little low. I realized I should have put it up a bit higher, but you know, one thing I can do is I could always put a title up here or I could put a cloud or something uh, just so that the illustration doesn't look kind of uneven. Like if it goes all the way to the base of the page, I want it to go all the way to the top. So. We'll put our little cloud and we'll write like Porto up there. So there we fixed <laughs> the unevenness. And yeah, I think everything is looking pretty good. Oh, I also missed that guy going across there. That's okay there. You know, we can always fix and make and, and just reference the other illustration and put things in. So you're going to be okay. You know, things will be all right. But yeah, for the most part, I think that's looking really good and I'm quite happy with it. So at this point, what we need to do is choose our fine liner. Now I've got the 0.2 millimeter nib here. I think that's a bit small. Um, the 0.5, that's I think probably my perfect one. And what I can do is start just carefully, carefully going over everything. Now, feel free to move the book however you need to, to keep things straight. And don't worry too much about making things perfectly straight. We're just going for like a very hand-drawn look, I guess, is what we what I am going for. You could use rulers for all of this. Ugh, that just gives me a little shiver down my back, but you could, and some people would. And I think some people really enjoy, you know, spending the time. And I'm a bit more like, let's just get it done and it'll be cute and then we'll move on to the next thing. So to each their own. I like that very hand-drawn look and I just want to do little tricks like pulling the pen, sorry, this is probably off camera, pulling the pen towards my body to make the lines fairly straight. And are they perfectly straight? No, they are not perfectly straight, but that is kind of what I'm going for. So we're just going to trace over everything one more time. I know it's a bit tedious, but as I said, you are also going to know your illustration so well. And so you're going to be quite confident and that will also help with the hand-drawn look, but uh, the sort of confidence of those lines. It'll look hand-drawn, but it will look impeccably hand-drawn. And we can always thicken up some of the lines like on the balcony. There we go. And the nice thing about these fine liners is that they are waterproof and the ink is archival. Um, so we can paint on top of this. And basically what we've done is created like a coloring book image. So then adding the watercolor on top is like very fun and stress-free and all the good stuff without any of the, the bad. Like we just get to add a little splash of color and it's fun and not stressful. So I will probably turn this camera off again in a second here because this is gonna be a bit boring but we are just tracing over everything one last time. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and I like to add little details like these little brick sketches, you know, yes, we're going to add paint on top, but I still like this little stuff that gives the illustration some texture. So, and for the brick, I just kind of do this little crisscross, almost like you're drawing little T shapes and L shapes. Um, and like we could add some in here, maybe a couple little hints up here. And yeah, pull that pen towards your body, make a line that is straight, but not too straight, not ruler straight. I really get nervous on the arches. Ooh, you can do this, girl. So just a friendly little recap here. Your lines do not need to be straight. You do not need to go for like perfectly straight. I think little sketchy lines and broken lines, like things that don't quite, you know, connect are totally fine. And then it's also nice to add like a little bit of line shading at this point, you know, stuff like maybe just filling in along the bottom of the balconies, darkening them up a, a slight little bit. I'm gonna put some lines up in here. Just a little bit of that. And then of course we will add lots of color and shading as we do the watercolor painting. So perfectly imperfect all the way with this, even though we are not uh, drawing or painting plants like flowers and leaves, my favorite subject matter, it is still, there is still room for that kind of perfectly imperfect vibe. And we don't need to get everything, you know, exactly just so. So let me just finish this up. We're also going to do our best to erase uh, the transfer marks. They sort of look like pencil. It is graphite paper. They don't always erase perfectly, but we should be able to erase most of it. I'm going to actually leave the tile blank, I think. That is not an area that I need, uh, like any more design or shading, because I will actually draw in some, um, or paint in some, some tile designs. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to put my little cloud up here. <laughs> and then right Porto. And then everything is kind of like more symmetrical. And I can get out my watercolor paints. Okay, friends, time to add the paint. I uh, really went over this with an eraser, like really, really trying my best to get all the graphite off. Most of it did come off and you can see what it looks like now. Remember, this is available as a coloring page over on Patreon, so you can print it and transfer it into your own watercolor sketchbook or just have fun coloring it as is, like on your computer printer, or I suggest printing it onto cardstock. But yeah, head over to patreon.com slash Campbell and check it out. You can sign up to become a patron and support this channel, and it's only $3 a month. The price will not go up. Three bucks a month. I've tried to keep it as inexpensive as I possibly can. Okay, we have to decide. I've got, this is a little watercolor sketch pad. Remember, um, supplies in the description. Blah, 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 blah. I've got a little travel set of watercolors here from Aquafine. They're just, you know, very simple little set. You don't need much to do this. And now we kind of just need to think about like, what color are we painting everything, basically? And... Yeah, that's a great question, actually. <laughs> One thing I know is that I want to do some classic blue and white Portuguese tile down here. So why don't we just start there? 
we're going to have fun coloring this in. As I said, this basically becomes your little coloring page that you made for yourself. And I think it's just a very relaxing little practice to sit and paint everything in. So definitely you're going to want like a small-ish watercolor brush, something like a number four or number three. And I'm just, you know, painting like a very messy little flower, but it, it's working for me. <laughs> it's going to give me the look of that beautiful Portuguese tile. I've done every other one. So then in this one, I think I'll do like a little diamond. There we go. So yeah, just giving the look of the tile without really doing all that much, you know? Just keeping it simple. There, that looks cool. Okay, and then I definitely want to do this little plant over here. I can do a little bit of green. The nice thing about adding watercolor on top of your illustrations is that you can be quite playful with it. And for me, that means leaving a lot of negative space, like just kind of barely finishing, I guess. I think that just gives a very playful look and I just really enjoy that. So that's what we're gonna do there. Uh, bah, 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 bah. The doors in Europe, in, in um, Portugal specifically, were all such gorgeous colors. So I feel like I need to honor that. And I think I wanna make this one like a pinkish red. So let's grab some magenta, grab a little red here. I haven't thought this through overly much, but we're going to figure out our color palette here. So, ooh, I like that. It's almost like pink. That works for me. Once again, you can just, you know, leave a little negative space, totally fine. I've kind of been going back and forth on what color to do the actual building, but I think I want to do like quite a sunny, like creamy brown, like, I don't know, some sort of somewhere between yellow and brown so that the color is bright and playful. I'm using a bit of raw sienna, a bit of white. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I'm into that. The nice thing here is I don't have to actually fill in everything. Just like I said, you can get quite playful and loose with it. There we go. And once you've transferred the illustration, like you have your graphite transfer paper, you have that tracing paper. So it makes it very easy to just transfer it again. And then in the next one, you could go over it with marker. How cute would that be? And you can kind of keep extending this illustration that you've done and kind of approach it in a few different ways. I'm also going to release a little darker color on some of these bricks. I think that looks nice. There we go. Yeah, just being very playful with my approach to coloring this in. And what I've done here is because I use pink and blue, it really pushed me towards using this yellowy brown for the building color because it's kind of um, like a modified primary palette. I've got my red, yellow, blue, and then of course the green really pops of the plant. And then I can decide what color do I want everything else to be up here. Let's just go like that, paint you in, perfect. And then, hmm. I'm thinking maybe either dark like maroon or dark green doors on this floor would be really nice. Oh, 
let's let's try like a maroon color and just see what that <laughs> see if that kind of fits i'm mixing like a dark ultramarine with a bit of dark red i would even add a little bit of brown into that to make it a little less bright purple how do we feel about that hmm yeah, actually, I think let's just do some shading over here. I think I'm going to go with a dark green because I just think it's going to be too much with all the doors being the same color. So let's get like a malachite green and we're just going to mix that dark blue in as well. Maybe mix a little Payne's gray in there, which has a wonderful bluey tinge because we want this to be a really, really dark color. All right, let's try that. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm gonna lighten it up slightly by just adding more water in here because I don't want to lose the detail of like the balcony, all that stuff I want to keep. So if I use a color that's too dark, all of my pen work is just gonna blend into like this super dark green. So just by simply adding some water, that's all we need to do. That's all, no problem. There we go. And you'll know if it's too dark and you're just like, oh, I barely can see my balcony anymore. Just add water. to bring it down through here. Was purple the right color for shading? I mean, it's not awful. <laughs> there we go. I think that's kind of fun. We could do a little stroke of that darker green on our plant, give it a little bit more life. And then I want to grab like a dark brown and I will add some brown to some of these windows. So like you guys, or maybe I want more light blue up there. That would be pretty too. Hmm. No, I think I'll do brown. Brown works. There we go. And the paint just sort of glides on and makes coloring your illustration a breeze and same thing i'm not going for perfection i do not need this to, to look perfect We can always use a bit of that darker brown to um, add to the brick as well if you want. I'm going to use that color up here and I'm just doing like some messy, messy horizontal brush strokes. There we go. I just want it to have that really loose, free watercolor look. I think that pairs nicely like with the structure of all that pen, that illustration that we transferred is beautifully structured. So now we can get a little more loose with things and just, you know, like, oh, I'm gonna make you a little darker <laughs> there. That looks fine. <laughs> I'm gonna mix a little bit more Payne's Gray into my brown. And then I'm just gonna go across the, ooh, you. That's way too much paint in my brush. When you have too much paint in there, it's so easy to lose control. You cannot be precise. So just be aware of that. There we go. You're looking cute. Okay, and I need a little Payne's Gray for my little flower pot here as well. There we go. Okay. Let's bring 
that brown down here as well so that it kind of ties in with the top of the building. Okay, at this point, we're mostly looking for a bit of shading. Uh, I'm just gonna darken up that purple color with a little bit more pigment. So you can always darken your color watercolors simply by just adding more paint and don't add quite as much water into it. That might even be too dark. A little bit more water in there. And then I'm just gonna go like boop, boop, oops. <laughs> that looks fine. Maybe use just a hint. There, cute, cute. What am I doing? I don't know. I'm just having really, I'm just having fun with this and playing around a bit. And I think that you can see that in the piece of art, which I think is great. I think I might just get a little like very free, more free than I usually would do and just put a little bit of sky around this, like very loose. Since there is a cloud up there, we might just have to, you know, <laughs> add some blue. Did put a little bit of water in that, I mean a little bit of white, lots of water. There we go, very loose. Very free. <laughs> Okay. Remember, if you don't love what you create, you just transfer it and try it again. Try it again. There. Just adding a hint of gray to that cloud there. And then I guess I need to decide what color all those windows are going to be. Do we sketch them in with pen? Do we use a little bit of this Payne's gray? I'm not mad at the idea of the Payne's gray. I might even mix in a little water so I just get this nice light gray that isn't gonna darken up the image too much. Let's switch to my smaller brush, which is for me a number four. Let's just see what it looks like. How do we feel about this? Yeah, I like that. I could even put more white in there. So very light gray, that needs more water. So I also want it to be a very transparent gray. There we go. Just like I did in the drawing, um, I'm just keeping this very light and leaving lots of negative space. And it's a little weird and messy. That's okay. Da, da, da. For these ones, I'm leaving a bit more white space as if there is like a light reflecting. I just think it would be, it's gonna to be too heavy with like a dark green door and then gray windows. So you can always just do like a line of color and it'll just make it appear as though the light is reflecting in those windows. And by that same token, you can come back in here and like add, oof, just keep having too much paint in my brush. Like you can add a little bit of a darker area. And again, you get the look of a reflection and it gives a much more, I guess a much more lively dynamic window. The windows are like the soul of the, the eyes of the building. <laughs> and so you don't want them to look dead and dull. Let's do this one together. Let's make it really light gray, leaving negative space in there as well. And then these guys, she just keeps using too much paint. We just scribble them in, light gray, negative space, give it a second to dry. And we'll just maybe add a little bit of gray to these little guys up here. And then once it has dried, we'll add that bit of darker gray in. And then all of a sudden, the eyes of the window <laughs> will come to life. 
So we'll just blot my brush and we're just doing L shapes. You could also do like a triangle or just like a splotch in the corner. Just keep them all the same, at least within the row. Like for this one, I'm going to kind of just go across the bottom. Yeah, the, that looks a lot more lively than if we had just left it at light gray. And now I will add to these guys being careful or not careful to be a bit messy. I'm gonna add a little bit of gray to my tile so that they don't look too like perfect, I guess. There, it gives it a bit of shading, especially down here at the bottom. And what else do we need? Just a little something on the street maybe? I think, what color should our street be? I think I'm just gonna use like this light gray color. That's kind of pretty because a lot of the streets in Porto had this beautiful white tile. Like for the sidewalks, can you even believe it? It was just so gorgeous, it, it, gorgeous. It was magic, it was truly magical. I, I'm stumbling over my words. I'm still a little jet lagged. Um, yes, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> I'm jet lagged, there we go. Oh, that was so fun. I'm so glad that we took this little illustration and added a bit of color to it. It's just a really fun thing to do. Remember to grab the coloring page on Patreon, sign up to support the channel. It's truly what makes these videos possible is the wonderful community that is donating $3 a month and receiving lots of weekly um, of bonus content for it. And when you sign up, you get access to the five plus years backlog of content. So think of all the coloring pages and worksheets that are already there and bonus videos. And I also have an illustration e-course that focuses florals um, and it is on my website shadedcampbellcourses.com. You can check that out at any point. It's a great price and you can always bundle courses to save. Yeah. Okay guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me, my jet lag self today. I hope you got something out of this tutorial. If you did, leave a comment, leave a like, turn those notifications on and make sure to subscribe to this channel.